All right, guys, welcome to the Isaac Show. Um, the show where we celebrate and, of course, tell the powerful stories of African disruptors, you know, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs doing amazing things across the continent, right? So today we're going to be having an, an amazing human being, uh, someone I personally res respect so much. Um, of course, um, these days we talk a lot about entrepreneurship, you know, um, and there, of course, people seem to think that um, the world actually revolves only around people who actually start businesses. But the truth is, um, without those within the businesses, there won't be any business, you know. So entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship within the corporate world. And becoming um, an entrepreneur um, simply has to do with you being a disruptor within an ecosystem, within an organization. So today we're going to be talking to someone um, who is working the talk, you know, um, in one of the leading industries. Um, and of course, in also one of the leading multinationals uh, globally, right? Um, so I'll go through our profile um, shortly. But before then, let me just um, quickly uh, bring her in. Um, of who entrepreneurs are, they are innovative thinkers, you know, uh, within and um, an organization. I mean, people who start businesses. But today we are talking to someone who is actually um, acting as or like an entrepreneur within an organization. So, wow. Okay. Um, I think we are we're finally live with um, Mrs. Temitokbe Onitiri. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining Hi, us today. Hi, Isaac. How are you it's doing? Not amazing. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I think we have you live now. Um, thank you so very much for um, joining us today. And thanks for choosing to do this. Thanks for telling I'm choosing to tell your story. All right. So before we go um, dive right now, I'd just like to quickly go through... Um, our profile before we commence um, officially, basically. Um, so, um, Mrs. Temitokbe Onitiri is, um, of course, she's an accountant. She's an experienced um, um, accountant with um, KPMG. Uh, but then she does beyond accounting. Um, um, she joined KPMG in 2013, I mean, 2003. And in 2004, she took a leave of absence to help establish a family business. Um, she rejoined KPMG in 2005 and was admitted into the KPMG partnership on October 1, 2017. Um, over the last 18 years, she has been responsible for serving clients um, in the consumer markets, consumer markets unit of the audit division. Uh, she's a key expert in providing statutory audits, special purpose um, project audits, AIDS grant audits, IF, I mean, IFRS um, advisory services, including conversion, implementation, support, and capacity building, you know. Um, um, she's also, um, um, she also does accounting assistance services and due diligence reviews to clients in a variety of industries, including FMCG, consumer industrial markets, manufacturing, health, government, AIDS, development, telecommunications, technology, media, infrastructure, real estate, and property development sectors. Wow, that's a lot. Um, she's a Yellow Book certified auditor with vast experience working with aid and development organizations. She has leveraged her in-depth knowledge and experience to serve national and multinational organizations. In her role as a partner, she is responsible for signing auditory reports, executing management um, letters, dealing with external regulators, people development and business performance, just to say um, a little, I won't go into the rest, right? So that's basically, in, in a nutshell, uh, the profile of um, Temi Tokbe Onitiri. So once again, welcome to the Isaac Show, ma'am. Thank you so much for um, choosing to do this, and thanks for choosing to tell your story. So I'll just go ahead with the first um, question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Great. So, welcome again, ma'am. Thank you so much for choosing to do this. <laughs> it's, so great to, it's so great to have you. Um, all right. So, you, you're, you're, your partner is one of the top multinationals in the world. Um, so, why don't you start with your early days, you know, um, as a young um, auditor or, say, say, a young accountant. You know, tell us 
what was it like starting out you know when you joined the company was was that your first or um, was it kpmd you first joined was that your first work experience and how was it like starting out with the company basically yeah okay, okay. So, um so i studied accounting um from university of lagos um my father is an accountant i had quite a number of uncles that you know were accountants um so but the interesting part is that i was actually in science class because back in the days you know there was this story wow. about science students more brilliant than commercial students so i wanted okay. to go ahead, you know so so i joined yeah. the bandwagon by going to the science class <laughs> but you know i think ss was okay. the second term I, I think i realized that you know what i'm in the wrong place so i just went back to um to commercial so i started my career okay. being an accountant studied accounting i knew from my year 2 in school that i wanted to work in anderson you know so kpmg um is the old anderson kpmg nigeria kpmg professional services um used to be anderson in nigeria so i'm actually the first set of kpmg so it was the year wow. i joined that was the year anderson had the issue with eron and all that and it became kpmg so i'd always wanted to study okay. accounting um and then i joined um audit and so straight from school did my nyc in in, in kpmg and i've been in kpmg ever since wow wow amazing amazing okay so um um so you joined kpmg so basically you were one of the first breeds that joined the company as a tech when it started right um so no, wh- why is no. it that so, um so that they had always been they had always been under sin but the year under okay. became kpmg was the year i joined kpmg which yeah okay. which was september 2002 but i joined january 2003 amazing okay so 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 when you joined of course you joined um, that's you joined um, 2003 right yes january 2003 january 2003 okay great so um, at that point when you joined what was your what was your personal vision i mean career vision what was it that you were looking out to achieve as at when you joined at that time mean, I mean at that very young age you know when you joined the company what were you looking to do with your life what were you looking to achieve professionally what was, what was the goal for you you know i think for me at that time it was poco a poco it was a big deal that you know we even joined you know we got a job in KPMG you know everybody wanted to be in Anderson at that time so it was mm. a big deal I, i think for me the dream started in my year 2 in in Unilad Um so okay. um, someone invited me for the end of year party in Anderson then it was a fantasy land and I met all these okay. young bright professionals and I said to myself you know I asked them so what does it take to work here and they said well you need to get at least a 2-1 you know you need to wow. pass our test and that's it. so I said okay 2-1 don't worry I'm going to make a 2-1 you know um and he, and wow. this friend that you know um he was a senior senior colleague um he invited me again to the office You know he just said he wanted me to have a feel of the office so i remember going into the office then in Gerard Road sitting at the reception and you know all the smart young people coming in and out so i said yeah. you know what i just need to work in him so so the for me the first dream was to even get in and as i got mm-hmm. in it became clearer in terms of the things i wanted to do so i i wouldn't say i knew exactly what i wanted to be as at that time but i knew that i wanted to be you know in this kind of place with this kind of great mm-hmm. mind and i can see some of my colleagues have joined there eh? so i mean i i always wanted to be there so that was my initial dream interesting interesting okay so um um so as at when you joined would you say of course you wanted to work with great minds and then you had you had this personal vision as a young lady um, um what i know about who work in the corporate world is that of course they join a company and maybe of course they find it great in the first three years and maybe the fourth year the fifth year they are getting tired out and they're like wow i want to i want to experience something different so what was it for you that what was it that um what 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 made this narrative different for you such that you stayed on up until now like i mean is that that's why a decade almost almost two decades as well yeah so what what was the What was what was it for you basically that that held you you know uh in the company uh, keep going, uh keep focused 
basically. Yeah, I think I think for me, you know, I was very clear. I think for me, it was. Um, I think I was very clear about my values. I knew what I liked and what I didn't like. I knew that I wasn't cut out for some organizations. I knew that, you know, for me, integrity, you know, um, the right values. I knew that it mattered to me. It wasn't for me. It wasn't about the money, right? So, you know, yeah. so getting to KPMG and the values that it stood for, that endeared me, of course, and also the young, smart people that were in yeah. there. But you know, as I then got onto the job, you know, I remember, you know, the partner interviewing me then. And he said to me, oh, do you love challenges? And I said to him, oh, yes, I love challenges. And I remember that mm. he was then the partner on one of my jobs. And after almost a month of working in KPMG, he asked me, do you love challenges? I looked at him and I said, Thank I you. more than I ever bargained for. You know, so it's, um, <laughs> you know, there was never, never wow. a normal moment for me in KPM. And I, the wow. fact that you also have, if you, if you think that you are smart, right, and you join, you meet lots of yeah. people that are smarter than you. You meet lots of people mm. that, you know, you feel that I can learn from. And, you know, so, so mm. that gears you to continue. And apart from that is the different opportunities that I, that I had in my early career. I, I can imagine, okay, let me give you another example. There was a time I went yeah. to meet, you know, one of the, the financial controllers as a, as a year one um, employee. I went to meet one yeah. of my financial controller for things. And he said to me, are you a green staff? And I said, no, you know, I have experience. I have this, I have that. You know, what the job <laughs> does is that it exposes you right so yeah. I, I mean i can i can i have several mds of course they're not my colleagues right but i have access to yeah. them they listen to me you know and the fact yeah. that i've worked in different sectors it's never every sector is a unique experience right every client that you yeah. work with is a unique experience and for me i love the challenges that come with it and so for me that has kept me going you know apart from the fact that Absolutely. i also really wanted to you know work in in um in this organization amazing amazing okay so someone is asking i can see people uh, putting up questions already so one of the questions i've seen last year is um said um how did your value align with that of the, uh, that of the organization you know how how did you do you think your values aligned do you, do you think aligning your values with the organization uh, um helped you to achieve what you've achieved thus far within the organization that's one um the, the other the question is, again okay so the person is asking that would you say your values aligned with this organization and that has helped you come thus far that's the first question and then someone as someone is also asking even though the, the second question is actually in line with one of the things i want to ask so let me just ask right away so the other person is asking what has been your lowest point so far since joining the company okay have okay, you had no lowest so moment? Have, you, have you had a low moment yeah <laughs> okay, so I can see many questions. I'll try and deal with as many as I can and I'll keep it short okay. and simple. You know, so Okay, um, I also know some of them so that's um you're not Okay. Yeah. So I'll know them and I'll have to talk the other. Sure. So KPMG has got refreshed values, but the values that I that I, I knew when I joined the firm are values around yeah. you know, we seek the facts and provide insights, right? Our values yeah. around we are open and honest in our communication. Values around, mm -hmm. you know, we act with integrity. You know, values around we work together as a team. You know, and these are the kind of values that I'm cut out for. I, I, I mean, in, in this, I'm, I'm careful in my choice of words, right? But I was very yeah. clear in my mind, right, that this is yeah. who I am. I'm going to be open. I'm going to be transparent wherever I work, right? And I want yeah. to stand for integrity. And so I was very happy when I read the values of my, of my organization. And it was mm. the fact that it's about integrity, it's about open and honest. I mean, nobody, so for example, my evaluations is not done by one person. Quite a number of people will evaluate me. So I don't have to suck up to somebody, you know. So they will say Absolutely. that KPMG is one place. And, it's, and I think it's the same for most of the consulting firm, firms. It's one place that you yeah. go in, you don't need to know anybody. You are, you are assessed by what you do, what you bring to the table, and you really don't have to know anybody. 
you know and and that mm. was very important for me that this is the kind of organization that i want to work in again everybody's we've got our mm. values we know what works for us and we know how yeah. i felt that i was going to prosper in this organization so yes that's why i went for it okay amazing so that, that's the one about values amazing. okay yeah yeah so the second question was about um have you had um some low moments uh what has been your lowest points and how did you handle them well i won't say i've had the lowest <laughs> i won't say i've had the <laughs> lowest points right but i can tell you okay. that you know it's not always been high i would definitely say that it is not always you know it's, it's not always been high there are times when you know it we are always working under pressure always working under pressure for the most part don't let me say always right because there are times when yeah, yeah. Not mostly tense. okay and yeah. there are times when you have to juggle all this and you have personal commitments right and you know yeah. and, and somehow your personal commitments are also equally important right and the work is equally important because you don't want to let down your team you don't want to let down the Absolutely. client you know those are Absolutely. really trying periods they are really trying periods because juggling all that is really trying i mean there are other times yeah. in my career where I, well we use the word bongo a lot there are other times in my career where maybe i didn't live up to expectation and you know i i would feel really bad because i had a fantastic um direct supervisor and you know for me it was more important for me that i didn't let i, I didn't let him down So it wasn't yeah. about me not it was about me not letting him down you know so that times when i felt i let him down i really felt bad because he was he was a supporter my direct supervisor yeah. was a supporter he was an encourager and i felt that you know if he supported me this way the least i could do was also to pull my weight so i i think that Absolutely. that was the for me amazing amazing okay so um there was also another question before i go back into our questions um someone else also asked and i think that it's um, equally an important question that how did you deal and how do you deal with competition among your peers among colleagues basically so people on your same level with you who are probably trying to outpace you outrun you or outwork so to speak how how do you deal with those for the benefit of others very early in my career i had a chat i had a chat with um a respected senior colleague right and he said to me awesome. you are not in competition with anybody just know that mm. you are running your own race you are unique bring your unique proposition to the table and that's what will stand you out so i have never I mean, at any point in my career i've never thought i'm in competition with anybody it's always about what can i do to be for me the competition is against myself is about yourself, okay. how can i break my own limits how can i do more? how can i add more value so i've never seen it as being in competition with anybody because we have there there's, there's enough opportunity for everybody so you just have to Absolutely. always bring in your best to the job and that's really helped me Mm-hmm. Okay so um I I will, I want to go back at this point to the story basically because um we are more interested in the story of how it actually happened right from but from the bottom you came in I mean at the lowest um kinder of the ladder and um, now you're a partner so can you take us through the progression basically how did this happen you know from one level to the other in a nutshell basically if you can just take us through that but we would we'd love to know okay so, so let's let's make it quick so i started my career as a an associate right we call it um, yeah, associate. Yeah. and and that yeah. level as an associate is really more like you do a lot of you know admin task you waiting on your senior colleagues um so then you know we used to have audit boxes right because it was pretty manual so as yeah. as an associate you are the one carrying the audit boxes you are the one running yeah. around you are the one making photocopies yeah. um Absolutely. you are the one getting all the launch orders i mean pretty much you know what i did and i realized that as i waited on my colleagues as i waited on my senior colleagues i learned a few things yeah. so from one help me make photocopy i learned how to staple I learned how to put things on the table. From you know, please help me print. I learned how to align documents. And all those little yeah. little little skills were very important later on, right? 
for me. So that first year was, I'll call it a very humbling year because you come out of university thinking, mm. you know, you're so smart, you're this, and then you come into work and you go like, am I being paid to run photocopies or am I being paid, <laughs> you know, to, to get lunch orders? Yeah. But you know what, 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 yeah. what I learned during this period? I learned, you know, how to humble myself. I learned how to, you know, build relationships. Because the same people that I took their lunch orders and all that were the same people when I had problems, I could go to them and say, mm, Yeah, it's like serving. Can wow. you hear me? I can hear you absolutely. Yes. I can hear yes. you clearly. Yes, so after being an associate, I moved on to become a we call it experience, um, experience associate. And after experience, okay. associate, an experience associate, now you have a, you know, you have a new person you you can delegate tasks to. So I think that period was yeah. for me because of course now you're a senior person. You can say, oh, yeah. you new associate, go and help me get this, you know. And then, as a, <laughs> then I became a semi-senior. A semi-senior starts leading small jobs. So I started leading, I said leading small okay. jobs, you know. So they started okay. teaching you gradually. How do you manage, you know, your project management skills that is being tested yeah. at that time, your ability yeah. to command the respect of your clients. And then I became a senior. So I did three years as a senior. Sorry, um, sorry to quickly jump in. What what were the time lapse uh, between these positions that you're mentioning? Um, um, is there like there's a defined? Um, I mean, is, is it within this a one year period, six months period, two year period? or it was not always the same uh, period, basically. So ideally, if you do well, you, you are eligible to be promoted every year. So, okay. um, I got, <laughs> so I got promoted every year, right? Um, however, I had a nine months break in my career. So after spending about 14 months in KPMG and I moved on to the next level, my father had just retired, okay? And I felt okay. it was a good opportunity for me to help him you know, set up his company, yes. right? So I, I took yeah. a nine months leave of absence to help him. And then I rejoined KPMG. And when I rejoined KPMG, I pretty much lost a year because my colleagues had moved on, but I had to, re I had to repeat yeah. that year, okay? So I pretty much moved every year. And from still- I'm sorry to cut you. Sorry, I'll have to call you again. Yeah. So, so at, at what age? What? What you said? You 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 took a break to help um, daddy with his business. How old were you at this time? <laughs> oh boy, I would I would say I was in my early twenties. More like yes, I was in my early. Okay. 20s. Wow. And, and how did the business go? I mean, after after you took that break to intervene, you know, in helping to set it up. How I mean, how would well, you say uh, that experience? Yeah. Okay, so let me put it this way. The measure of the success, I would say, is that same business ha helps to train all my siblings through university. And, you know, two of my siblings studied in the UK. That same business helped them up. Um, and, and that business is still, is still running today. In fact, I just came back from wow. my parents' house today. And, and what I went there to do, basically, he wanted to bounce some business ideas off me. So I, I went to, I drove all the way to um, Egbeda. I live in uh, Lekki. Drove all the way to Egbeda. And I just got back from not too long before the call. Wow. Yes. I'm the firstborn, you know, so I feel that, you know, okay. there's always been a sense of mm -hmm. responsibility for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. So, yeah, we can, we can pick it up from there. So, you were talking about... Um, um, you got back after the business and then you continued your journey with your career. So can you just take it further from there? Yes. Yeah, so when I, when I got back, I became a senior and, you know, my days as a senior okay. were the field marshal. You, you are the one okay. on the ground, you are the one the client sees, you are the one holding the team. You are the one that the younger ones look up to, right? And, and that was my, yeah. my, those were my years as a senior. Um, and then I became a manager. You know, a manager as a manager, it, you know, you earn more money. You know, um, you're not you're not always on the field, but you you attend management yeah. meeting. You are responsible for budgets for a couple of jobs. And you know, as from a manager, I moved to a senior manager, senior manager, and then um, I, I was an associate partner for a year, and then I became a partner. So it was within the space of I would say about sixteen years. At about um, wow. okay, so I joined in two thousand and three. I made partner in twenty seventeen. So I was in a space of about fourteen years. Yes, because I've been a partner wow. for about three years now. 
Amazing, amazing. Okay, so 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 that's 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 pretty much um, the I mean the, in the Nigerian African facts global context. That's that's the story of um huge career success. So what what would you say? Um, yes, you've spoken about integrity, you know about values, but as an individual, what would you say? Um, were the top two um traits that actually help you scale this fast, you know, to move this fast um, across your career ladder, basically? Well, I will struggle with mentioning only top two. <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I, I will struggle with mentioning top two, but I'll tell you, um, one of the things I look out for when I interview yes. um, new hires into KPMG, I'm looking out yeah. for um, new hires that are, you know, are forward thinking. I'm looking out to people that will add value to the team. I'm looking out to, for people that are motivated by themselves, are passionate, right? Mm, and people that have a global yeah. mindset. Because all these ingredients, and all these values are very important for us. And so in my own personal space, what, what, what I would say is unique to me as a person. I'm very passionate, you know, um, and I'll say I'm pretty much organized. That stands me out. And, you know, the other thing for me that, you know, that when I looked at myself and I reflected as to if, if I wanted to get to the top in KPMG, what do I need to do differently? I realized yeah. that I needed to add value and bring to be mm. use the use my talents, bring my talents mm. to the organization. So there are many things that, you know, I was good at, right? So, for example, in KPMG, I, said, I, started this, I started doing a lot of things relating to CSR. And it wasn't long before I got recognized as someone who could lead CSR. And that's how I started leading CSR in KPMG. Wow. So, I mean, I'm into fitness and everything. And, you know, I started a group of KPMG um, employees and families that would just go jogging. And that's how I started this fitness group. And has become, in fact, a lot wow. of people don't even know me. I, don't, I hardly attend anymore, you know, when it happens in the office. But it has, it has gone way beyond me. Amazing. So I that if I wanted to play a different game, I needed to add value to my team in everything that I do. In any Amazing. team that I find myself, I should always add value. So that, that also stood me out. Yeah? Amazing. Okay, so um, now, I mean, you, you've been a partner for for three years, like you rightly mentioned. But then, um, what's, what does it really mean to be a partner at um, a multinational like KPMG? What's, what does it mean? Um, and um, in addition to that, how, I mean, can you tell us about how it really happened? Like, what's led to it? Um, was it that um, you had an exceptional performance in a particular year and it happened, had to happen? Or it was, of course, your performances leading up to that period? And of course, when it happened, how did it happen? I mean, where were you when you heard what really happened? Yeah, I mean, tell us, tell us that story, basically. <laughs> you know, let me, you know, the partnership, right? They said the partnership yeah. is like a club, right? So if you have a club, <laughs> you want people that are like you to join the club. Absolutely. And so it, doesn't happen, it doesn't happen overnight. So they start going mm. to you and they're asking questions. Are you like us? Will you add that? Mm. So it doesn't happen, as I said, overnight. It's a, it, the, over the years, you've been assessed and they feel, okay, at this point, they feel that, yes, she's one of us. She can be like us. And you know, the process for us um, in KPMG, you, are, you attend, um, so the, the process starts when your, your unit head nominates you, your yeah. decision head nominates you. So you're nominated, okay. you know, if there's a business case for you, yes, you're, you're put forward. Then you do internal, you do like a, a presentation to the partners. Okay. So you have all yeah. the partners. We have about, right now, about 42 partners. So you go and you make a presentation Amazing. to the partners as to why you should be admitted to join them. So once they, okay. once they, once they have that buy-in, because, you know, your, your direct partners know you, but there are some other partners that don't have direct access to you. So you need to also convince Absolutely. them. So you sell yourself. You make a presentation okay. to them. Once they are fine with your presentation, they are fine with your personality, they are fine with what you will bring to the table, you then go ahead to what we call the partnership assessment score. So there's a local assessment okay. score. If you pass that, you move on to the, the global partnership assessment score. And there you have people from all over Africa also bearing mm -hmm. the same thing. So I went, wow. I, went, I went for the partnership assessment score. And you have to pass. If you don't pass, you won't be made a partner. 
So wow. So we went through that rigor, and yes, I passed, and that was how I got wow. announced as a partner. Wow. So, so I, I mean, I mean, I wish I was, I, I mean, I wish I was there. But then, how, how did it feel being, I mean, making partner when it happened uh, three years ago? Can you, can you, can you remember how it happened? Where you heard? What's, I mean, what did, what did it feel like basically? How, how does it feel? I think I was really sober. Wow. I think I was wow. really sober. I was, I was really sober because Why? It, it comes with a lot of um, first, I was responsibility. Grateful. First, I was grateful. But two, I was sober. And I was sober because it comes with a lot of responsibilities as well. And I was, mm. also sober. I was also sober because for me, it's just the beginning of many things. Because, you know, for me, that wasn't the end point. It was, yes, dreams, number one, yeah, tick. But it's now the beginning of so many things. So it was, I was sober phase. because I was like reflecting like, okay, now the journey mm. has just begun. So that, that was really what it was. But I was very grateful. I was very grateful. Um, mm. I was very grateful, yes. Amazing. Okay, so um, um, I like to say that the secrets of champions, the secret of um, star performance basically is in their daily routines, right? We are what we do repeatedly on a daily basis, yeah. So um, what would you say is your normal daily routine? When you wake up in the morning, what do you do? You know, um, and what's, what's like, your, of course, I know it will be consistent, you know, all day long, I mean, all day across the week. But on a normal day, what's like your daily routine? What's your daily routine like, basically? Yeah. Okay. Before I go straight to answering that question, you see, one of the things that I, I quickly realized is that I couldn't okay. be exceptional at work and not be exceptional at home and not be exceptional mm -hmm. in the other things that matter to me, right? Absolutely. So, so Absolutely. for me, work is just one aspect of the many things that I do. It's just one of the aspects, right? And so I have to exactly. learn to organize myself. I, my sister makes, I can see my sister on, on this, on this um, chat, but she makes fun <laughs> of me that I live my life on Excel. I can, I can wow. everything I need to do is on Excel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm, pretty, so I'm pretty much organized yeah. like that, you know. That and so one. what that does is that I start my day very early, right? Okay. When um so before coronavirus, I start my day at believe it or not, I start my day around four a.m. Wow. Because for me, I need to when I start my day, I want to bless my day. I I want I want to ask God what is there in my day. What, what, what is there Absolutely. for me? What, what are the blessings? What are the things okay. I need to be aware of? So I start my day meditating. I pray I have my quiet time. You know, I'm a born again Christian. I have a, I have a deep relationship with God. So I start my day that way. And after that, I go okay. jogging or I do my exercise. We have our family devotion, you know, um, okay. up to when my kids, up to when our kids could bake themselves, I will bake my daughter, my, my husband will help out with wow. the son. We get them ready for school. Um, although we could drive separately to work, but we felt that we needed to drive in the same car so we have family mm -hmm. bonding time. So that means we have to be out of the house by 65. Yeah. We drop the kids, we take them all the way to their classroom because we want to be involved in their yeah. life. You know, I get dropped off at work. He goes off to work. Um, of course, I get started. I have my to-do list. What are the things I'm going to do for the yeah. day? That is very important to me. Yeah. Otherwise, you get to work and you realize that, you know, people are dictating your pace instead of you dictating your own pace. Um, so that's yeah. really what my day is like when I start. Um, 12 o'clock every day. So um, KPMD yeah. has 13 floors. I, I used to be on the... On the ten, on the ninth floor, then I move to the fourth floor. So twelve o'clock every day, I walk all the way from the fourth floor to the thirteenth floor and back for about thirty minutes. Yeah. I use that time to meditate. I use that time to also exercise and just to you know smell the roses. I get back to yeah. work. Um, pretty much um, when I do have the opportunity to leave office on time. I would love to leave the office at 6, but it doesn't always happen. Yeah. But I try to always sleep at 10 p.m. so that I have at wow. least six hours, six hours sleep, you know, if I can. So that's how my day is. And I have an Excel sheet that tells me, you know, all these things. I have my alarm and everything, you know, that way. So that's yeah. really how my day is. Now my day is a bit, it's a bit different. I wake up at 6 because I don't because know of COVID-19. But it's still yeah. structured. 
I, I'll show you something now. This is my, I'm staying on my, sorry, I'm staying on my son's, um, uh, on my son's table. Mm -hmm. And you know, I had to print out okay. an Excel timetable for him. So that's how it is. Wow. I go to my kitchen, I have an Excel timetable mm -hmm. all over the place for everybody. You know, so even when I'm mm -hmm. not around, the house is running. And mm. uh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so this next question is really something um, something that, um, that is causing a lot of debate across the board when it comes to as far as um, working in the corporate world is concerned, especially even for women, you know, um, in the corporate world. Right, so and here's the question. Does masters really matter? I mean, I mean, must you have, um, you have the goals to reach the top of your career? Must you have a master's or an MBA degree, right? And if yes, um, should it be master's or should it be MBA, and why, basically? Well, I mean, it's not going to be a generic answer, right? It's about what matters to you. So I'll give you an example. I, I, for example, I, I just submitted an application to say business school to do an EMBA, right? I've, I've worked seventeen years. Do I really need the master's? Really not. You know, and I saw that... Um, really not, because... Okay. Sorry? I saw that through your 17 years of work, and um, I haven't even made partner. You you basically... Well, except I, except I didn't get to see the full profile, but you basically haven't um, gone for a, your master's degree, uh, so to speak, yet you've risen so, so, so far. Yeah, so, so, so is it a must? And if yes, why? I don't think it's a must. And, and, and as I said, you need see, when I joined KPMG, I remember I told my interviewer, I said, you know what, I'm only here for three years. In fact, I wish I was more, I wish I was more um, emotionally intelligent. But I remember telling the interviewer, I'm only here for three years. And after this, I'm going to do my MSc in economics. And he goes, OK. Wow. OK. And, I, and, you know, later when I had the chat with the head of audit, he said to me, well, I think he put it in my, in my, um, in my file and he said well she will be here for at least three years <laughs> but i was only there for 14 <laughs> months before i took off and then came back wow. and I stayed for seven months. okay before years. you left that came yeah. back. you know yeah. what so yeah. the truth is sometimes you don't have clarity as to what exactly you want to do and my advice would be don't rush to to do it i mean if you do it at a time when you you're not ready it will be it will it will be of added value to you someday but if you do have mm -hmm. the chance to do it, ex work experience is good. Because you might start out being, being an auditor and you realize that, no, maybe you are even a system auditor. No, maybe you are, you are into deal advisory. You know, maybe you are into management consulting. Mm -hmm. You know, so, mm -hmm. so for me, at this point in my career, you know, I got married. I, I've got children. Um, I've learned to juggle things. And I realized, okay, I think now I can add an MBA to the plate. I can juggle an MBA. And that's why I am applying for one now. So does it okay. stop me from achieving okay. my goals? Or did it stop me from being who I am? No, it didn't stop me. So, but it's a good yeah. to have. I think it's a good to have because it helps you with global network. And it also helps yeah. you to see things from other people's perspectives as well. From other, other cultures. From other cultures and their perspectives. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So now, um, this is also really important, right? So you are, you are Tommy, in the, someone you are in the said business. something. Quick one, Isaac. Someone said, yes, professional qualifications. I would certainly say you have you, professional qualifications oh. are okay. important. So if you're an accountant, yeah. I say to people, if you're an accountant and you are not, you know, you're not a chartered or qualified accountant, you really can't say you're an accountant. So in your mm, profession, okay. if, it's, if you are in HR, go and do a professional qualification. So yes, professional qualification, yes, it's, it's an absolute... Very important. Yeah. Very important. Okay. All right. So, so, you, so you got into the um, accounting space, but you are, you're now specializing in the audit um, units, right? So um, I also know that one of the issues that people actually, um, one of the things that people actually worry about, you know, one of the challenges people face, especially upward mobile young people, young Africans is, um, okay, so they are in, a, in, a, in an organization, but they are not really, they are not really so passionate about what they are doing, uh, even though they feel that they are supposed to be within that system. But they feel at times that, okay, maybe they are supposed to operate in a dif different department. So how exactly did you know that, okay, audit was a thing for you? and not um, another part of the accounting um, ecosystem? Well, 
I'm very curious. <laughs> I am very, very curious. People who know me know that. I had to learn to... <laughs> I had to learn to conduct myself, right? And um, so I can, I I can imagine. Myself, it means that to my friend, I have to learn to respect their privacy. But as a yeah. person, you can't say, you can't tell me something, I'll take it for, for the face value. I will ask him, <laughs> my husband is always tired of me. Like he will say <laughs> something and I'll ask him why and why and why and why. I would never take I can imagine. For, yeah. Face value. And I mean, Isaac, you know, when I, when I participated in the, the orange um, corner, orange corner, I'm very curious. I want to know more. I want to know more. I like to ask questions. Yeah. And I can remember, I can remember the hot seat, your hot seat that I was on that day. Yeah. So yeah. I will never forget. <laughs> so, so, the is, so the truth is, I mean, that's my personality. And I realized that, you know, being an auditor aligns to what I do because as an auditor, you've got to have professional skepticism. You've got to be curious, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that aligns mm -hmm. with what I, I, I love wow. to do. Um, Amazing. Yes, so, so pretty much why I have stayed um, this, this long. Someone asked what my professional qualification is. I am a qualified accountant. I've got um, um, ICANN, it's a ACA. Um, and recently, I did a diploma in advanced management program with Lagos Business School. Um, and then I got certified as a yellow book auditor. As a yellow book auditor, it means that, you know, for, for the for US, um, it's, it's called, um, it's yellow book audit, auditor or what you call US DAGAS, you know, generally accepted, um, generally accepted government auditing standards. So it means yeah. that I can okay. do things. I can do um, audits for um, U.S. given um, grants, um, and in, in Nigeria, not a, not a lot of us are, are certified in the KPMG office, but quite a number of us um, get certified, certified every three years. So that's my that's okay. that's my professional qualification in a nutshell. Okay, so now um, as as a partner, as a partner with um, KPMG. What would you say are the key? Um, what would you say are the key um, traits, the key characteristics, the key skills to actually succeed? I'm, I'm asking for someone who may have the vision to be in your, in, in, of course, in your in your position in future. Uh, maybe a young person watching this or that would watch this. What would you say are the key traits required to not just um, survive but to thrive in this position, basically? Yeah. Okay, so as a partner, you know, um, I'll, I'll put it in three buckets. So one is the interpersonal skills. As a partner, you're okay. responsible for all the people working with you, right? Um, so both your um, the, the direct your direct um, colleagues working with you, fellow partners. Yeah. Don't forget that these are very smart people, and you've got to yeah. influence them. You've got, you know, when you have things, you've got to get them to agree to you. And you've got to agree to their views as well. So you've got to know how to influence. And you've, you've got to be exceptional. Interpersonal mm. You would always Absolutely. liaise with clients. You would liaise with regulators. You would liaise with different stakeholders. And you've got to be exceptional with interpersonal skills. Mm -hmm. Emotional mm -hmm. intelligence, all of that is all intertwined. Mm -hmm. This one I would say is... You know, I'll, I'll call it um, I'll call it um, I call it forward thinking. And forward thinking means that you know, the public sees you as an expert, and it means that you always have to develop yourself. You need to know what is happening. So from time to time, I always do trainings. I, you know, the trainings they're always um, no matter how busy you are, I've got to do trainings. I've got to know what is happening. From time to time, I get opportunities to speak on different sectors. So I need to know what's happening in the sector. So you need to be a subject mm. matter expert in a lot of areas, you know. And mm. you've got to be curious as a person as well. And thirdly, I'll say entrepreneurial mm. skills. Because as a partner, you also you need to make money. Yeah. You know, you need to make money because your colleagues want to earn bonus. They want to be paid, yeah. you know, um, as of when you... So that means that, you know, things around business development, getting new jobs, yeah. <coughs> and ensuring yeah. profitability on jobs, you, you have to do that. So I say in those three main buckets, um, so entrepreneurial yeah. skills, forward thinking, interpersonal skills are very important to have as a partner. Okay. So if, if you had to start all over again, what, what would you say 
would there be anything you would say you would do differently, you know, um, um, within the space of your career if you were to start all over again, based on what you know now, what you've learned now, um, and how wise you are, you are now, what would you say you would do differently as a person? Well, I'd say, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't change anything. I think I'm grateful for all the experience I've had. Even that nine months being away, you know, working with my dad, yeah. although I kind of lost a year technically, you know, but yeah. that experience taught me to be an entrepreneur. Because, you know, the mistake a lot of the new hires make when they come in is, you know, they come yeah. in and they are not used to work ethics. They're not used to yeah. sitting now in a place, you know. If you give them something to do, they just want to do it and get yeah. it. They, they don't put in their best for some of them. I'm, I'm not generalizing, but it happens for a lot yeah. of the new hires because they're learning the work ethics and it's understandable, which is why you have to guide yeah. them and direct them. But I realized that working with my dad, that helped me with, you know, responsibility. Because mm. I knew that even when some of the staff would say, oh, I'm going home, I knew I couldn't go home. Because I was Oga's daughter. Mm. And I know that. See, even yeah. if everybody goes home, we have a tender, we have a beat to submit. So even if it meant that I don't yeah. sleep throughout the night, and my dad and I, we are doing it together. We are doing it together. So that mm -hmm. helps me to, 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 you know, to be responsible. And yeah. I won't change. I would never give up that experience, even though I lost a year then. But I'll never give up that experience for anything. So looking back, I won't mm -hmm. say that I would, you know, do anything differently. I would say that I am really grateful and thankful to God for the opportunity mm -hmm. that I've had, you know, over time. For favors I've also had, for mentors and for sponsors and for people that have supported, for colleagues that have helped. You know, I'm very grateful for the experience. So, so talking about mentors. Um... Who would you say, I mean, I mean, thinking really deep back and now, uh, who, who would you say has had the greatest, you know, positive impact on your career and why? <laughs> I think it won't be fair to mention names because a number of, you know, they say in, in Africa that, you know, yeah. it's a village to, to, to train a child. And, you know, it's I would say that it's, it definitely took a village, <laughs> you know, um, to get to this point, you know, I, I was, wow. you know, I was um, one of my clients recently, the CFO of, the, of, of, that, um, of that organization is one of the top FMCB. Yeah. She was my first, you know, we call it in charge. She was my very first in charge, right? And yeah. I only related with her once, right? But that initial tutoring and helping out, it helped me, right? And then I moved on. I worked with different people that impacted on me one way or the other. So different people impacted on my career. And it won't be fair to mention just one name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. Okay. So now let's let's come to let's come to family a little. Um of course, and I think it's also in line with the question one of our um, viewers is actually asking. So you do a whole lot, you you are like a superwoman, you know, um pushing all the boundaries at work, you know. And of course, you also have a, a very, I mean, happy family, I believe, you know. So um, what, what's the formula for balance for you and how do you make it all work together without having anyone suffer? Well, as I said to you earlier, you know, for me, I realized that I will be a failure if at work I'm exceptional yeah. and at home yeah. I'm a disaster. Or yeah. You know, God forbid, I dropped down dead today and I had to meet my, my, my savior. And I say, oh, oh, Jesus, I was a partner in KPMG. I, you know, that, yeah. that, 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 would, that would not take me, that would not give Absolutely. me a life, if you know what Absolutely. I mean. Absolutely. So every, every different facet of my life is so important. Absolutely important. And... I have to, there are things I've had to sacrifice to ensure that those different aspects of my life, I don't yeah. get the ball. Yeah. So, you know, um, so in the, on the home side, you know, I've got to pay a little extra for support. So, so much as I love to go to the market and price meat or price fish, I can't yeah. do that. I don't have the yeah. time to do that. So, I delegate. You know, thank God yeah. for, you know, I see Aga's old food, all those things. You know, you, you order online, you have to be smart yeah. as, as a working yeah. woman. You've got to be smart. 
And, you know, that okay. means that, you know, on the home front, I delegate a lot of things, of course, but I don't delegate, you know, the care and love for my husband or the care and love for my children. You know, with church, Absolutely. there are many things, you know, as, as a person, I realize that, see, how do I stay, how do I keep up the fire? So there are certain services I have to be at. I'm also a worker in church. There are, wow. there, there are definitely things I have to do. I don't give it up. You know, I realize that I might not be able to go to church every time. But I then, you know, with a couple of friends, we started a prayer group. So even if I cannot be there physically on the call, virtually, we are praying together. So you need to look at what works for you. And there is no excuse yeah. not to be exceptional in any chosen field that you've laid your hands to do. There is absolutely no excuse. If it means that you have to sleep less, then so be it. If it means that you don't go for all the O and Bs, so be it. But you've got to be exceptional in all aspects of your, of your life. Okay, so so what what I mean, um, um, this question I want to ask is a little um towards the spiritual side, right? Because I I um I'm I'm like on overdrive when it comes to that. What would you say has been the role of the Holy Spirit, you know, in um your achievements, your career achievements, family achievements, um, so far so good? What would you say um has been the role that um, um the God factor and the Holy, Holy Spirit has basically played so far? Yeah. I think it's, you know, someone once asked a question and said, you know, as I read a, it was a comedy and someone said, you know, give me, if you met Dangote today and, you know, Dangote was, was to give you money or if yeah. you get to have a meeting with him, what will you do? And yeah. the person said, you know what, I'll collect the money because I don't want to go and meet Dangote and Dangote tells, Dangote tells me it was God. <laughs> because that's what everybody, when you ask everybody, oh, why are you successful? They'll say, oh, it is God, oh, it is God, oh. But you know, the truth is, it is God. <laughs> you know, it is. It is, it, is. it is God that gives you favor. It is God that gives yeah. you favor in everything that you do. You can imagine mm. if I worked with the wrong person, or if I worked with someone that you know made made it very difficult for me, I could have resigned. You know, yeah. or I married the wrong person or mm. I got into the wrong hands, you know. Everything, mm. every, everything for me is always revolved around the Holy Spirit, you know. And, mm. you know, I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the gift because it's a gift. I'm thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit because it directs you. Yeah. Even with audit, there are times when we've done audits before. We think that we have finished the audit. And just before mm. you sign, you just say, Holy Spirit, please, is there something I am missing? And you just check wow. again and you see that, yeah, there's something that someone has done wrong or, you know, you just see something missing. So there's, a, there's yeah. something, not that I think, I know that there is the, there is the, um, the, 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 the work of the Holy Spirit is very important in everything. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. for me, I say to as many young people that I can talk to, even my colleagues, you know, yeah. there is a role of the Holy Spirit in everything. There's a role of God in everything. I'm a strong believer in it. I don't judge other people. But if I had a chance yeah. to tell people what has worked for me, that has worked for me very well. You know. Amazing. Okay, so um, um, we have, um, our time is fast spent. So I'll just go with two final questions, right? The first one will be, um, from your professional standpoint, and based on your very vast experience, what would you say, had if you were to start a business today, what would you say are the two untapped most lucrative business opportunities in Africa right now? <laughs> you know what? I, I, I would, um, it, it would be unfair again for me to say two untapped, right? I mean, I know okay. that everybody yeah. says agriculture, healthcare, and I agree. I agree that agriculture is one untapped area. I also agree yeah. that healthcare is also another untapped area. But I'll keep it like this. Yeah. I'll keep it simple. There are yeah. many untapped areas. I think the key is what are the needs? Where you have the needs, where you have the problems, and you can solve that problem. It is, yeah. an, it is, it is, it is an area that you will generate money from. So the question yeah. is, if you can ask, if you sit down and reflect and say, where, 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 where do we have the need? Where do we have the problem? How can I solve that, yeah. question, um, that problem? That is definitely yeah. an area that is going to generate money. So it could be agriculture, it could be healthcare, 
you know, and when I think about, you know, um, my clients, because I work, you know, in various sectors, yeah. which of my yeah. clients, you know, maybe a cue, a cue to that answer will be, which of my clients gets the biggest margin? My clients that gets the biggest margin is my client that is an FMCG. I have a client and it's a listed yeah. entity. That listed entity wow. makes a profit margin of 30% of sales. Most yeah. companies make deep gross profit margins of 30%. This company makes a net profit margin of 30%. Mm -hmm, and this company mm -hmm, is in yeah. the FMCG sector. So any CG. area that a lot of people will consume, that the masses will consume, mm. trust me, that area is a gold mine. So I hope I've Amazing. answered the question. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so we've talked about this, I mean, all the serious stuff, uh, very, very serious stuff. Um, um, but for you, after... All the accomplishments and achievements um, after a long day at work. How exactly do you? How do you unwind? How do you have fun? What's your idea of um, of fun, basically? I love that question because I love I love having fun. I really love having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So, you know, people know me as you know an auditor. We, we are very serious. You know, there's there's an impression of auditors, serious people. You know. But absolutely that's there's a serious side of me but there's the fun loving side of me how do i have fun you know i, I play i swim so i love to swim i, I play oh, um, really? i play tennis i play tennis well um I wow go to the gym i enjoy you know um so my kids say horse riding so i'm i'm learning i'm gonna learn how to start um to ride the horse once covid is over but my kids you know, wow. already learned how to ride horses so i'm looking forward to joining them um in recent times um so i see that my kids ride their bicycle a lot and i can't you i cannot save my life riding a bicycle so it's one thing that i'm <laughs> it's one thing it's one area um that i i've been trying to, learn. to teach me but he, he, you know he's not helping me out so i think i'm gonna get an instructor to help me with riding but other than that i'm not i'm not a tv person i really don't love tv but you know i love reading books when i do have the time but other than that i'm more outdoors i love to be in the sun jumping Amazing. running. I, I love to run as well i run a lot every day so yeah, yeah. so that's for me uh, my own idea of fun uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's that's pretty amazing. Thank you so 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 much. Um, it's been a very insightful time chatting with you. Uh, but in closing, basically, uh, I would like for you to uh, basically imagine a young lady who is out there who's like you in the year two thousand and three. Okay, who's looking to commence her career and looking to um, make God proud, like you've done. You know, what would you say to that lady? What I would say, wow, I would say, I would say, I will use seven guiding principles that have helped me, right? Okay, I'll, great. I'll, 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 I'll say that you have to start with a heart of gratitude, right? You have to mm. start with a heart of gratitude. I see that, you know, people throw a lot of things at you. You see people doing very well and you are asking yourself, you are comparing yourself. I would say, please don't compare yourself with anybody. You are not competing wow. with anybody. You, you are who you are. You are great. You are a daughter of the Most High God. You are the son of the Most High God. You are outstanding. You are who you are. And I would say that you know, be outstanding in whatever you do. Do not settle for less. Don't be a medio mediocre. Be outstanding. I do not accept mediocrity. And I think that generally, you know, we are okay with mediocrity. Whatever you lay your hands to do, do it well do it very well. Mm -hmm. I would also say mm -hmm. that you need to create your own brand. You know, mm -hmm. creating your wow. own brand is, what is unique to you? What can you give? Are you an encourager? Encourage people. Are you, you know, are you a pusher? Push people. Whatever you are good at, create your own unique brand and bring it to the table. Don't hide, you know, because everybody's got their own God-given talent. And, you know, yeah. the world is waiting for you to manifest those talents. So come out wherever wow. you are. Don't hide. You know, and start small, and people will support you. And I'll say that I'm you have to. I, I would, I would say that you know, you also you have to learn to collaborate and connect with people. And collaborate mm -hmm. means you know, 
speak to people of like mind. Be in a group of mm-hmm. like-minded people. Because let me give you an example. Once I was trying to um, do a barbecue and I, I separated the coal and I realized that the charcoal, it wasn't burning well. But once you put the charcoal together, the fire starts. Mm-hmm. That's the power Absolutely. of a group. That's the power of yeah. working as a team. Find people like that can support your passion, that can hold you accountable, Absolutely. and that can motivate you to greatness. Wow. Thank you so much. We have just 10 seconds to go. So it was amazing. It was awesome having you around. I personally have learned a lot, and I can see that um, the audience are actually blown. Thank you so much for all the work that you do, and thank you so much for coming on board tonight.